Gary Gensler, the chairman of the SEC, has been saying this line, uh, you know, come on in and register. And that is a lie, unfortunately. And I, and it's a, it's even a career risk. And it's it's something that I take seriously to, to say that the chairman of the SEC is lying. But unfortunately, we've got to have a clean industry. And I don't want liars in my industry. And that, unfortunately, and bizarrely, uh, happens to include the SEC chair right now. He is not being accurate when he says that. You can't just come on in and register. Uh, and there's many, many, many companies that like ours who have registered and there's companies who've tried to register and can't for various reasons. And there's all kinds of drawbacks and delays and shenanigans, the kind of things that you see in a third world uh, country where it's more about who you know and what connections you have than it is about the letter of the law. And hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan and the lies are just rampant. Yes, we also know that with the release of the Hinman emails, William Hinman lied. When he was asked if there was any communication with anyone other than the SEC staff about the substance of his remarks in the famous June 14th, 2018 Ethereum speech, before he gave it, he answered, no. Well, that's just not true. He consulted with Vitalik Buterin, a leading third-party promoter of Ethereum. It has added to the evidence in the Inspector General's referral for an investigation, according to Jason Foster, the founder of Empower Oversight. Allow me to play back a little bit more of that powerful opinion from Bruce Fenton, where he was interviewed by Ash Bennington of Real Vision Crypto today. It's very good. Okay, next question comes to us from Diego Filomena on YouTube. Uh, Diego starts out with a comment. Great guest, he says. Please ask Mr. Fenton about Promethium Gate at Congress a couple of days ago. Boy, I'm glad you have to explain this one, and I don't. I should say, uh, this is a story that's still developing. Uh, the facts are still coming in, but you want to take a crack at this, Bruce? Yeah, sure. So basically what happened is they've been pushing this line like, come on in and register. And those of us in the industry who know everything say, well, that's nonsense. You can't come on in and register. Nobody's ever succeeded in it. So surprisingly, last minute, uh, this company that's kind of sat around uh, dormant for several years just came along and got this very special and unusual license that no one else has called a special purpose broker dealer which enables them to be able to hold some crypto assets. Now, what's suspicious about that is that it came very late. It fits right into the narrative so that the SEC can say, hey, look, here's somebody who's done it, uh, that you can register. Um, but there's a lot of suspicious things. As you said, it's an unfolding story. There's suspicious things about the funding coming from China, the leadership, uh, a couple of them went to a law firm or, or uh, they, they got their law degrees at a law school that got uh, unaccredited. There's uh, the, the, the co-CEOs. Apparently, one of them doesn't even have a license and the other one has only had a license for a year. Uh, the per the per person who the co-CEO who testified yesterday uh, or, the, or recently in, in Congress uh, isn't even licensed at all. And apparently his brother or some relative is the, is, the, is a co-CEO. Uh, so it's, it, it, to have this company that comes out of nowhere with no background that nobody's ever heard of uh, happen to just get this magical license that nobody else has been able to get. And also, by the way, still can't do anything. The license is a sham. Uh, you, you can't do anything with the license, but it sounds good. Uh, it's all quite suspicious. And I think it should be looked in you know, very, very carefully. I'm glad there's freedom of information requests out there. I'd like to see you know, how did they get, how did this nothing company that nobody has ever heard of get invited to, to testify in Congress and, uh, and exactly what happened behind there. It's, it seems like the government might have tried to pull a scam on the American people. You have many people on Twitter sleuthing on this company, Prometheum. Let me show you one video that no one has found. Just in case you've stepped away from crypto for a couple of days and yeah, things change so fast in this space. This is about the company that is led by a co-CEO by the name of Aaron Kaplan. As I sort of mentioned before, um, Prometheum's team are experts at the intersection between securities regulation, the brokerage industry, and the distributed ledger technology. And basically, uh, Beyond our partnership here, as I mentioned before, Shanghai Wangzhang Blockchain is our co-founder. They're not a partner, they're our co-founder. We work hand in hand with them. And leveraging their excellent resource and expertise, we really feel that we can achieve our business plan in an efficient and intelligent manner.
this Chinese company is not just an investor, as you heard, they are a co-founder. Many YouTubers are saying it was just an investor, but you can see there is a lot more of a connection there. And as Charles Hoskinson says, who the heck are these Prometheum guys? In my opinion, I think the SEC just put in a plant to show that you can register, but we all know that that was just a sham. Senator Tommy Tuberville wrote a letter to Gensler about his concerns, giving the first ever special license to a Chinese company, yet denying American companies a way to register. The Wanzang Blockchains Lab is a company that, as you can see here, has Vitalik Buterin on as its chief scientist. But Prometheum now claims they are an American company because of an omnibus contract separating the relationships between the two. I'm sure this story is going to develop further and we'll keep our eye on it, but I'm now going to move to BlackRock because, wow, they've officially filed for a spot Bitcoin ETF. Yeah, it's huge, but also too, as Jesse Hines points out, BlackRock in doing this just is keeping the rich rich and the poor poor. And I want to point out one more thing that Charles said. He said that Bitcoiners defending BlackRock is all you need to know about their ethics, mental state, and greed. You know, that is way too much of a generalization. I think everyone needs to be very careful. Don't say like those guys or they or because you, you just cannot generalize that way. Bitcoin was the very first cryptocurrency I ever purchased back in 2014. And you can't tell me because I am a Bitcoin owner that I'm defending BlackRock. And now look at this. We've got some excellent news coming out of the Quant Network camp. They have been collaborating with the Bank of International Settlements and the Bank of England on a project called Rosalind. Quant is one of my top three, and mostly because I know CBDCs are coming and there are just so many solutions out there. Why would I put only one solution in my basket when I can have Quant that makes all of those solutions interoperable? They were chosen to provide the technology because of the history of innovation, their expertise in fintech, and also deep payment experience. And I thanked Gilbert Verdian for including a privacy aspect of this test. APIs define how systems should talk to each other. The prototype connects central bank ledgers with private sector service providers. It experiments with API functionalities that would enable providers to develop applications. These applications would help individuals and businesses to manage their CBDC balances with the central bank and make payments to each other in shops and online. The project explored many CBDC use cases. Some use cases tested integration with existing payment systems, some tried new ways to make payments, and some tested applications with emerging technology. The project also tested a privacy model that would not give the central bank access to users' personal data. The Rosalind experiment shows that the API prototype could support many different use cases and could work with different central bank ledger technologies. It could connect the central bank service providers, individuals and businesses to create an ecosystem. New ways to make payments could be added as the ecosystem continues to innovate. Project Rosalind, building API prototypes for retail CBDC ecosystem innovation. Well, I've got a big week coming up. I have a new project that's going to reveal that they have chosen the XRP Ledger to build on. Also, former Ripple product manager Craig DeWitt is going to join me and talk about his new company. And yeah, I want to put a smile on your face because, well, there's new utility coming for XRP and it's with the side chain that has the smart contracts functionality hooks. And you can now get a new line of accessories by T. Boone. He's a designer that works in titanium with the hooks motif. Yeah, if you want to know what is going to make an impact on the XRP supply, you need to focus on hooks by the team 
that's led by Witsa Wind at XRPL Labs. I'm going to be featuring a lot of that tech, a lot of new projects. And let me tell you, that's where it's at for the XRP holder. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.